In the situation of uniform accelerated motion, you'll always have the same basic scenario. There will be some object that's traveling at some initial velocity. We can call that velocity v0. That object will accelerate, the velocity will change to some final velocity, which we can call v. The idea is that this object will move from a position which we can call x0 to a final position which we can call x. This displacement of the object will take a time t and during this displacement the object will accelerate with an acceleration a. There are two equations of motion which you derive from calculus to describe this situation. And those equations of motion are x minus x naught equals v naught t plus one half a t squared. And the second equation is v equals v naught plus a t. If you combine these two equations together and eliminate the variable t, you can create a third equation which is very useful, which is v squared equals v naught squared plus 2a x minus x naught. There are two other equations of motion. I'll go ahead and list them here, but they're not as useful as the others. There's one where you can solve one equation for a and substitute into the other. That way you eliminate the acceleration. And that equation is x minus x naught equals one half v naught plus v times t. And there's a fifth equation which looks just like the first one, it's just instead of having v naught, it has a v. So that equation is x minus x naught equals vt, and it's minus one half at squared. The hardest part about solving uniform accelerator motion problems is knowing which equations to use. There's, you know, there's five of these equations. How do you know which one you're supposed to apply? I found that the easiest way to do this is to actually list out the quantities that are given in the problem. So you put your two positions, the initial and the final position. You put your two velocities, the initial velocity, the final velocity, and then you write down the acceleration, and finally, the time. So the trick is to actually write the given information here. So I'll just make up a few numbers here, like just randomly. So let's say the initial position is zero, the final position is unknown, the initial velocity is 10 meters per second. The final velocity is unknown. The acceleration is five meters per second squared. And let's say the time is mm, two seconds. So you can see here that there are two unknowns. We don't know the final position and we don't know the final velocity. So we would need to use the equations of motion to figure out those two quantities. And it works out beautifully because these first two equations of motion, those were the two equations that were derived from calculus. So realize that even though there's five equations here, there is technically only two because these other three equations down here are derived from those original two. So we have two equations, there's two equations here. That means that we can only have max two unknowns. And that's just a rule of algebra. You can only have as many unknowns as you have equations. So let's go ahead and use these equations of motion to try to figure out the final position and the final velocity. So the first step would be to find the final position. So the way it works is you want to ignore the velocity because you can't have one equation to find the final position that has velocity in it if the velocity is unknown. The equation can only have an one unknown in it. It can only have an x. So what we need to do is look over here at all these equations of motion. Look at all of them here and ask ourselves, which equation has x but is missing v? And you just go down the line and you look at each one. So this one has x, and look, there's no v. There's a v naught, but there is no v. So that's actually the equation that we're going to use. You can check the next one here. This one doesn't even have x, so we can't use that equation. This equation has x, but it also has v, and we can't have a v because it's unknown. 
This equation also has an x, but it has a v, so that means we'd have two unknowns. And the same thing with down, this one down here, it has the x that we're looking for, but it has the v. So we need the equation that doesn't have a v, but it does have an x. And so this is the equation we're going to end up using. So what we want to do is write down that equation, x minus x naught equals v naught t plus one half at squared. Now the variable that we're solving for here is the final position, is the x. So now this is just an algebra problem. Before I plug in, I always like to check to see if any of the quantities are zero so we can make them go away. And in fact, the initial position is zero. So we can just draw an arrow through this showing that it goes to zero. All the other quantities will remain. So that means our formula is gonna be x equals v naught t plus one half at squared. Now we just need to plug into this. So we're gonna have the initial velocity, which is up here, which is 10. Substitute that in for v naught. Next we have the time, which is two, plus one half the acceleration. Acceleration is five. Again, we've got the time of two. And instead of writing two squared like this, I found it to actually be much easier if you just write times two. So instead of putting two squared, just put two times two, because that's what it means to be squared. It means multiply by the same number. Now we can just do the math here. We don't need a calculator for this. 10 times two, that's 20. Plus, well, two times two is four, and half of four is two. So this is gonna be two times five. So that's just 10. And there we have it. We see that the final position is 30 meters. And we knew the unit was going to be meters because we use standard units up here for every quantity. We didn't use any like miles or kilometers. Everything is meters and seconds. So we don't have to worry about the units. So that's how you find the position. Suppose instead we wanted to find the final velocity. We didn't know the final position. In that case, we need to go back to our equations of motion and this time find the equation that has velocity but doesn't have final position. If we look at the first equation, it doesn't even have the final velocity in it, and it does have the final position, so we can't use that equation. This equation has the final velocity, and it's missing the final position. This is the one we need to use. Just to confirm, you can see the other equations. It has an x, can't use it. We don't know x, don't know x, don't know x. So these other equations can't work. So that's the one we're going to use, v equals v naught plus at. So go ahead and write that equation down here v equals v naught plus at. In this case, we are trying to find the final velocity. So we're gonna go ahead here, take all the values that we've written down, substitute them in, and find the final velocity. The initial velocity was 10. The acceleration was five. And the time was two. So have to do the math here. We're gonna have 10 plus five times two, which is 10. There we have it, the final velocity is 20 meters per second. So that was a pretty simple kinematics problem. They can get much, much more challenging, and we'll do some more challenging examples in the next video.